Evening all, it's time for another session of Grammar Drills with me, Mr. Kettle. And today, we're going to be looking at commas, the Oxford comma, and the bane of English teachers everywhere, comma splice. So when do we use commas? Well, we can use it to break up longer pieces, longer sentences, but mainly we use them in a list to separate a subordinate clause, relative clause, adverbial openings, or to introduce or close direct speech. And we're going to look at all of these in today's short session. I know. First of all, then, let's have a look at commas used in a list. Billy liked eating pizza, running and swimming. He's going to do himself an injury and get indigestion if he's not careful. I think we need some commas to slow him down and break him up a little bit here. Billy likes eating pizza, running and swimming. And that final comma there is called the Oxford comma. Now, the Oxford comma is stylistic and slightly controversial because some people think it's inessential, it's not needed. However, does it change the sentence if we remove it? Billy liked eating pizza, eating pizza, running and swimming. Now that makes it sound like he likes to do running and swimming at the same time, which would be impressive. So that's why I think we need the Oxford comma in this case to show the three things that he likes. However, if Billy enjoyed running and jumping, as an activity together, as something you can do, like the hurdles, well, then we don't need the Oxford comma because there's no need to separate those two activities because they come together. However, Billy clearly does like indigestion because he likes eating pizza and running and jumping, hopefully not following one following the other. Similarly, if things always come together, especially with food, if you look at this uh, sentence at the bottom here, at the restaurant, Billy ordered pine chips, often come together, fish and chips, again, come together, and a chocolate fudge cake. We don't need to separate every individual item. Okay, to separate a subordinate clause, we've looked at these earlier when we're looking at complex sentences, and we know that the subordinate clause has extra information to the sentence, but it doesn't make sense on its own. There's three places we can put up a subordinate clause, at the start, embedded, or at the end. At the start there, as it was raining, is the subordinate clause. It's got to be followed by a comma, because what the sentence is, is Billy was running for the bus. That's a sentence it can stand on its own. But the subordinate clause gives us extra information that it was raining. You'll notice in that final sentence there, because the subordinate clause goes at the end of a sentence, a complex sentence, it doesn't need the comma. Bit of revision for you there. Comma splicing, Arrgh! it's a common error. It's when you put a comma at the end of a sentence rather than a full stop or other punctuation for effects, such as a question mark or an exclamation mark. Please remember that a sentence contains a subject, a verb, and it's a complete idea. It must make sense, and it has a capital letter at the start. I'm gonna show you some examples now to show you what I mean. The kitten was cute, I wanted to take it home with me. Oh. Two simple sentences here with a subject and a verb. The kitten was cute. The kitten is the subject, its verb is was, and it was cute. I wanted to take it home with me. I am the subject and I want to take it home with me. So that's two sentences and joining them with the comma is inaccurate. We can do it in three different ways here. As two independent sentences with a full stop in between. The kitten was cute. I wanted to take it home with me. We can do it as an independent clause. Sorry, two independent clauses separated by a conjunction, which, as we know from our uh, compound sentences, are fanboys, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. And in this case, we've used so. The kitten was cute, so I take, I wanted to take it home with me. Or we can have two independent clauses separated by a fabulous semicolon. Okay, we can use it um, with a relative clause here. A relative clause connects ideas by using pronouns that relate to something previously mentioned. And examples are that, which, and who. And these allow the writer to combine two independent clauses in one sentence. So the cat, which was ginger, jumped from the roof. And the relative pronoun, which I was referring to earlier, there is which. Adverbial phrases we looked at last time, when we're looking at adverbs and adjectives and verbs. 
and they can give extra information about how something is done and should be followed by a comma. And Billy running for a bus still, I wonder if he ever catches it, I'll have to see. As quickly as he could, comma, Billy ran for the bus. Direct speech. We're going to look at this in closer detail in another session, but we're just going to touch on it today. Because commas can be used to introduce or close direct speech. Now, direct speech is when you write down the exact word that someone says. It can be made up of the word spoken. I hope the bus is on time. And it's got the reporting clause, which would be Billy said. Let's have a look at this. I hope the bus is on time, said Billy. So here we have the reporting clause after the speech. And we've got a comma there after um, the words that have been spoken, but inside the uh, speech marks. The reporting clause can come before the speech, Billy said, comma, I hope the bus is on time, full stop. Again, inside of the speech marks. The direct speech can be embedded. So Billy said, comma, I hope the bus is on time, comma, as he left home. And if the direct speech is split into two, but with the reported uh, clause in the middle, I hope the bus is on time, comma, said Billy, comma, it was late last week. You can see there the comma is used in lots of different places, but it tends to be after the reporting clause, unless the reporting clause is at the end. And as I've said there, the comma goes inside the speech marks. And we're going to look at these in a different session. So the take home, commas can be used in a list. They can be used to separate wonderful subordinate clauses in your complex sentences and for relative clauses and adverbial openings. And they can be used to introduce or close direct speech. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time.